Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, time for a more modern machine here. My name is Connor. Hello. I like to learn about things and watch stuff on YouTube. Preemptive like this almost has 40 million views. That's a lot. Jared Owen. Uh, subscribed. Let's do it. Did I say original link? Top description. Discord below that. If I, maybe I said it twice. Let's go. Today's video, we're going military. Let's look at how a tank works. We're going to focus specifically on the American M1A2 Abrams tank. We'll look at the Caterpillar tracks, the turret, where the crew sits, and the engine in the back that powers it all. Look how big the turret is. The M1 Abrams tank was introduced in the year 1980. The tank was named in honor of United States Army General Creighton W. Abrams Jr., who was a commander in the Vietnam War. The idea with the M1 Abrams tank was to keep it low to the ground so that it was harder to hit. Angled sides on the tank allowed enemy fire to deflect off the side. It's a bit cozy inside, so I hope you're not claustrophobic. During operations, the crew may spend hundreds of hours inside with very little sleep. There are many versions of the tank, we have the M1, then came the M1A1, and then the M1A2. There's also minor variants of the tanks with many different enhancement packages. But to keep things simple, let's not worry about these, just these three major versions. They look very similar on the outside, but there's been plenty of improvements to items such as the armor, electronics, and the weapon systems. Each new version is generally heavier and slower, but the increased tech makes up for it. For the rest of the video, I'm going to focus specifically on the M1A2 Abrams tank, though some of what I'll say will be true of the previous versions as well. Let's look at some specs. The height is 8 feet, the length is 32 feet, and the width is 12 feet. For comparison, here's the size of a person. This tank weighs a whopping 68 US tons. That's equal to the weight of about 35 cars. Even with all of that weight, that's equal to the weight. So that's, what, 136,000 pounds, which is about a third of the weight of a blue whale, I think, which is insane. That something that compact can weigh as much as a, a third of a blue whale. Weight of about 35 cars. Even with all of that weight, the tank is capable of speeds of up to 42 miles per hour. It has a fuel capacity of just under 500 gallons. Again, just for comparison, most cars can only hold about 16 gallons. But tanks need all of that fuel because they only get about 0.6 miles per gallon Jeez. compared to the average car, 25 miles per gallon. So it's a gas guzzler, but it's heavy and powerful. Let's look at some of the features of the tank. We have the Caterpillar tracks, the wheels, there are seven on the ground on each side, the main body, which is called the hull, and the turret, which is the part that spins on top and holds the weapons and other equipment. The engine is housed in the very back. The tank holds a crew of four. Three of them are inside the turret, and one of them is way up front. Now that we're familiar with the outside of the tank, let's look at more specifics, and we'll start... So that's where the driver looks out of? I'm assuming it's bulletproof. Glass. Now that we're familiar with the outside of the tank, let's look at more specifics and we'll start with the Caterpillar tracks. These are sometimes called tank treads. They are made of steel with replaceable rubber pads. There are seven road wheels on each side of the tank, a raised idler wheel in the very front, and the drive sprocket in the back. This one has gear teeth on it and it's the only one that's powered by the engine. It moves the entire track along. Interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Just one thing moving the entire tread and all of these are just there to roll on. Okay. The other wheels spin freely as the tank treads move past it. The road wheels also have suspension built into them. The whole reason we use Caterpillar tracks is to allow the tank to go over some very rough terrain. Most barriers don't pose any problem for the tank to pass. Regular vehicles with four wheels have limited surface area in contact with the ground. 
they can get stuck much easier. That's why it's a good idea to stay on paved roads. The tank, on the other hand, has a much larger surface area to displace all of that weight. Obstacles in the way are usually not a problem. The tank can even climb some very steep hills. Most of the time, it's still a smooth ride for those inside the tank. The tank is steered by altering the speed of the tracks. For example, to turn left, the right tracks need to move faster than the left tracks. Unfortunately, the caterpillar tracks are the most likely part of the tank to break. The good news is that the tank usually carries tools and spare parts so that broken links can be replaced and the tank can keep moving again. Next up is the engine, which is in the very back what? of the tank. So I keep, whenever I see the, the top, the, the turret is huge. It's almost as big as the tank, like as surface area. Moving again. Next up is the engine, which is in the very back of the tank. For repairs, the entire engine and can be lifted up out of the tank. That's cool. And so it can't turn, so the tank can't turn its turret um, 360 degrees. And or the even, tank can keep moving again. Because you can see it goes up at the back. Or maybe it can and it just makes it. Next up is the engine, which is in the very back of the tank. For repairs, the entire engine can be lifted up out of the tank. This is an AGT-1500 engine, which can run off of several different fuels, but most of the time it runs off of jet fuel. In your car, you'll find what's called a piston engine, with these pistons moving up and down to rotate the shaft. But in the tank, you'll find a turbine engine. This People are so smart. Like, that's just, that's so crazy. So, so, okay, so, uh, so it goes up, take the boom, it makes like an, there's like an explosion because it compresses everything and that shoots the piston down and then these pistons go. Shaft. People are but so in smart. tank, you'll find a turbine engine. This one works a little bit more like a jet engine that you would find on an airplane. However, this engine is actually fairly quiet, which is really important so you don't give away the tank's position to nearby enemies. The engine gets very hot, so these two side cooling units will help remove the heat. The exhaust comes out the back, so make sure and stay clear when the engine is on. There's actually a phone on the back of the tank. This way, soldiers on the outside can communicate with the crew on the inside. The sides have armored plates called side skirts to protect the wheels and the caterpillar tracks. These can be opened up in sections for better access to the road wheels. Couldn't, so I'm hesitating in, in case I can catch my own answer, but why don't they cover more of the, uh, why, don't, why doesn't the armor extend a bit more down to protect the wheels a bit more? I'd imagine it, it gets in the way of something when it's moving. Caterpillar tracks. These can be opened up in sections for better access to the road wheels. On the front, there's headlights here and four tow hooks down here. Remember, there are many different variants of the M1A2 Abrams tank, so another tank might have slightly different features on the outside. This top part is called the turret. It can rotate all the way around in about nine seconds. Okay, never mind. This is the main gun, which is a 120 millimeter smooth bore cannon. This means that the shells or ammunition are 120 millimeters, and so is the bore or the hole that it goes through. The shells leave the barrel at about 3,500 miles per hour. It can hit a target two miles away. The automatic stabilizers allow the gun to stay locked on targets even while going over rough terrain. Oh, that's this way cool. the driver doesn't have to Ooh, that's cool. to stay locked on targets even while going over rough terrain. This way the driver doesn't have to stop every time the tank needs to fire. The tank can even spin in place while the main gun remains locked on target. Right next to this is the smaller coaxial machine gun. Up on top, there's usually at least one more machine gun to operate. On the sides are smoke grenade launchers. There's one on each side of the tank. 
These make it harder to be seen during combat. Is that, I wonder if it's more for attack or for defense, both. There's not much room for equipment inside of the tank, so oftentimes the crew will put it out here on the bustle rack. Actually, there are two wait. hatches on top of the turret, the commander's hatch and the loader's hatch. Inside of the turret, you'll find three out of the four crew members. It's a bit cozy in here. The gunner sits down below to the very right. The commander sits directly behind the gunner. The loader is off to the left of the main gun. When the turret rotates, all three of these crew members rotate with it. Underneath here, this is called the turret basket. The seal between the turret and the hull is so good that it can protect the crew inside in case of chemical or nuclear warfare. A few more things I want to show you about this tank. The commander can see 360 degrees around the tank through the viewing ports. The shells for the main gun are stored in a large compartment on the back of the turret. The loader can then open up an access door, grab a shell, and load the main gun. This must be done quickly during combat situations. If any of the ammunition is ignited, the panels on top are rigged to blow off so that the explosion goes up instead of into the turret where the crew is located. The driver sets it's up a th things like that that make me think like there must have been something. So I I'm assuming that it probably killed someone before they realize they have to do that, or maybe they did that as a precaution. But it's 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 little things like that on these big machines that make me think there must have been like a bad situation where that would happen a lot. And so they it, it just like a a trial and error. That's what I was looking for. Trial and error. Sorry. Mission is ignited. The panels on top are rigged to blow off so that the explosion goes up instead of into the turret where the crew is located. The driver sets up at the very front. There's a hatch up here that can be opened to go inside. There's not much room up here either, so the driver has to lay back in the seat. The controls are up here, and two brake pedals down here. There's no gas pedal in the tank, just use the two black handlebars for acceleration and steering. The driver also has periscopes that allow him to see a 120 degree field of view. Why are they Usually different the colors? driver enters through the hatch up front, but if needed, the driver- You guys notice how they're different, like there's red, green, blue? Usually the driver Why? enters through the hatch up front, but if needed, the driver can climb into the turret and then through a tiny door in the basket and into the seat. Yikes, imagine, imagine, oh God. What if the turret started to rotate when you were halfway through to get into the driver's seat? ...that allow him to see a 120 degree field of view. Usually the driver enters through the hatch up front, but if needed, the driver can climb into the turret and then through a tiny door in the basket and into the seat. The United States isn't the only ones to use the M1 Abrams tanks. It's been sold to other countries such as Australia, Egypt, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. The M1 This might sound stupid, but why does Australia even need tanks? I mean, they're, they're a continent. And so it would really be only for I don't know. I'm sorry if I sound stupid. I, I just, I, I'm trying to learn here. The 2 Abrams tank has been in use for almost 30 years now. At some point, it may be replaced, but for now, it continues to be the main battle tank for the United States military. Woo! My name's Jared, and I create 3D animations on how things work. You do a good Visit job. Visit my YouTube channel for lots more animations just like this one. Go ahead and click on the link here, or click below to watch another video. And thanks again to War Thunder. Download the game for free. Just use my link in the video description below. I do want to know how a VHS works. But Sometimes, obviously not now. Um, wait, I didn't mean to. For today's video. A really cool video. Um, yeah, awesome. I wouldn't buy really quickly. It was only 10 minutes, but still. Yeah, I love learning about this stuff, any sort of engineering, um, not just military. Military stuff is cool, but even a lot of civil engineering stuff I find fascinating as well. And uh, yeah, I love to watch more of these videos. Hope you're all doing well. Would love to see uh, your comments down there. And um, yeah, hope you're doing well. Just 
Chin up if not. You'll be okay. Don't worry. Be happy. But, okay. Bye, guys.